I am with the stunning, beautiful, athletic, model, competitor, racer, Jordan Rand. <laughs> you can interview me any time. You have me up so much, I love it. I don't know how else to introduce you because you are so special and you are so amazing. Thank you. And um, more importantly, you are representing and you are representing a community a diverse community that has been very much underrepresented for the longest time and it's been underrepresented because of maybe fear not because people aren't out there with very these true. diversities very true so from my point of view you are an incredibly brave person thank you and you're brave because of where you're from and I heard where you were from earlier on the stage when you spoke with Racing Pride because this is where we are, we are, we're at the Racing Pride stand. So please just begin by explaining where you're from. Yeah, uh, well growing up in the US, um, particularly in the middle of America, I grew up in a really Christian conservative environment and um, there wasn't a lot of room for being queer. Um, and so I really kind of leaned away from, from my queerness and I, I think because I'm bisexual and I, I had the ability to be attracted to men, I really leaned into that and I had many straight friends and so I didn't have much of a community around me that could make me feel safe and feel okay to be myself. Um, and so finding Racing Pride has just been honestly life changing to be surrounded by people who are not only comfortable being themselves but also crushing it. That is so inspiring because I think when I was growing up, I was told that if you're if you're queer, you're going to have a really hard life. It's going to be really tough. Yeah, it's going to be really yeah. difficult to be successful. It's going to be really difficult to be happy or find love. Um, so to be able to find people that are just genuinely so happy and to know that we're capable of success and we know that we're capable of experiencing unimaginable, unconditional love is just, yeah, it it really does make a huge difference to being able to feel comfortable and confident in who you are because it is it's a scary thing to to be able to come out and be confident and and to talk about it um and oftentimes at least for me i felt like i was an imposter in my queerness like maybe i was just doing it for attention or something you know and um to be able to meet people who are very much like me it's just so so precious Wait, was there ever a point when you were younger where you felt like because i know a few people say i felt there was something wrong with me was there ever a point, maybe because of the way you were raised? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I genuinely was raised to believe it was a sin. So my, the fact that I wanted to kiss my best friend was like, I used to cry myself to sleep at night feeling like, what's wrong with me? Why, why, why am I doing this? Like, why can't I just stop? Like I would cry myself to sleep every night and ask for forgiveness. And the next day I would still go and practice kissing for boys, oh. you know? And it just, um, it, it took me a really long time to not feel to not feel that guilt and to not feel like I was doing something wrong. And have you been back home? Is everybody more accepting now? Uh, I can't say that the environment as a whole is that accepting. Um, I have come out to my mom. I came out to my mom just last year on my birthday in July. Wow. So that was a really big deal. Um, and I did it in a really beautiful way, I think. Um, I don't know if you've seen the TV show Heartstopper. I have not. It's no. a really beautiful show and in the show, one of the main characters is bisexual and comes out to his mom and it's a really beautiful scene and the mom has such a supportive and loving reaction and she says um thank you for telling me i'm sorry if i ever made you feel like you couldn't tell me and i love you so much yeah. and it's like those three sentences are everything that a queer child wants to hear from their parents and i actually showed my mom that scene because it in a way it's it's a it comes out for you so you don't have i didn't have to say it um and i just was like mom I'm also bisexual and I would really love for you to respond in a similar way. Yeah. And it kind of gave my mom a script, it modeled what that, mm. that reaction should look like. Yeah. Um, which I think is really helpful because I think a lot of parents, when they're running blind, they just don't know what to say yeah. and it's so easy for them to accidentally say the wrong thing that can be really hurtful. Yeah. Um, I noticed there's a lot more churches being built in Colorado Springs, which is where I grew up. However, I did go skiing in like Keystone, for example, right. and they have big signs that say you belong here with the pride flag oh wow and there were a lot of queer people that were both skiing and working and it was it it healed my whole heart my whole my heart just exploded being there because i was like this wouldn't this is unimaginable for me as a child yeah are you based here in the uk are you based in europe are you based in the states uh, i'm between new york and london okay yeah so where are um, you? Where are you based? I'm based in Manchester. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the world. Do you come down to London? I can do. Okay. 
We should go coffee sometime. No, let's do chat. It. You're so easy to chat with. No, no, seriously, <laughs> definitely, let's do it. Uh, so tell me about your racing career, because I first met you just under two years ago at the e-scooter yes. uh, championship. Initially, you had a, almost a full season there of racing scooters. Yes. Electric scooters, proper FIA championship yeah. with Formula One related people, personnel, Alex Burt, some very big names in there. Yeah. And you were a part of that. And uh, you looked incredible, <laughs> by the way. Thank Those you. leathers and, you know, and that Thank posture you. on this. And you were quite good Thank as you. well. Thank you. So um, just tell us that experience of being in that very first e scooter championship. I mean, it was such an incredible thing to be a part of, given. That we were making history as the first e-scooter championship race ever. Um, that that in and of itself is just such an honor. Um, and yeah, I mean, I had a motorcycle background and I was also a competitive figure skater. And when the championship started, they were looking for athletes from different sports. So we had like Olympic speed skaters, we had BMXers, we had Olympic snowboarders, and we were all invited to try out. And if you were fast enough, then you got to compete in the championship. And because it never existed before, it was like they had to make racers from scratch. Yeah. Um, and luckily, I think it was really a, a right place, right time situation. And also with my, my motorcycle background, I had done racing schools and I had such a passion for it for like the last 10 years, but I never competitively raced. Always wanted to, but just never really had the opportunity. Um, and I also didn't have that representation when I was growing up, you know, not a lot of like women in, in, in racing. And so, and so what's been recent for you competitively? Uh, recently I took place in the, uh, pilot training academy for E1 oh. electric boat racing. Wow. Um, I'm an ambassador for Livewire Electric Motorcycles, um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see what this year brings. I'm really excited to see to see what the future will hold. And you're an ambassador, of course, for Racing Pride. I am you're an ambassador a, for team. Racing Pride. Yes. So I saw you on, on the internet, didn't see you in real life, um, at one of the, was it Austin or somewhere like that? You yes. were at one of the Formula One races, yes. is that right? I was, yeah. yeah. I gave Lewis Hamilton a Pride Flag friendship bracelet. Yay! <laughs> hopefully he's wearing it. I, hopefully. We'll check next time we see it yeah fingers crossed there's another side to this beautiful lady and it's modeling this is true this is very true your pictures are phenomenal I'm just, uh, i just feel like i'm a number one fan right now <laughs> because go on to jordan's instagram seriously this girl has got everything yeah i um i'm definitely looking to expand and do more stuff on social media actually um i've been growing my social media platform quite quite a bit yeah. and i've been talking a lot about queer topics on on TikTok, um, and then yeah, it's just kind of combining my love for adrenaline and being active and just kind of living a, a never boring life. And your modeling, you and an and, mo and modeling. Yes, I'm signed with uh, Women Management in New York and in Paris and Milk in London, and I've had the incredible privilege of I actually did a campaign with Pandora uh, recently, Pandora Jewelry, yeah, and it was a queer it was a queer campaign. I um, that representation meant a lot to me to be when I was younger I was genuinely looking for that kind of representation in yeah. media I just didn't see it you know it wasn't in the campaigns it wasn't in magazines and so to, to actually get to a place where I get to be yeah. that representation for maybe a, a young queer person who's going to see that campaign and be like oh you're going to be the face that <laughs> that meant means everything to me and so I do hope that I'll have more opportunities like that this year um, but yes definitely lots lots coming down the pipe when it comes to modeling so I'm really looking forward to it I'm really excited for you thank and you and I'm so happy to meet you again for the second time yes I'm so happy and, too and chat more freely because even two years ago things were a little bit different for you um, and your world was very much opened up big time and I'm so excited to, to see your future and thank you so much for chatting. Thank you so much. Can I hug you? Yeah. Oh.